and welcome to Berlin. We're coming to you live with day two of the 2017 EU LCS. Yesterday, H2K and G2 were victorious over Origin and Fnatic. And today, four more teams make their spring split debut on the Rift. As you see, Giants setting up there on stage for their bout versus Misfits. And a couple of fantastic cosplayers joining us in the studio as well. Good evening, everyone. I'm Eve Fischok Zaportra, joined here on the Analyst Desk by Martin the Fischo Lunge, as well as Dracos. There we okay, go. You got it. You got it. I was That's always it. nervous. He's literally been using the old name all day non -stop. What was the old name again? I'm not going to go into this. It feels like we use it more now that we're told not to. I'm actually to. pretty sure we say it all the time, yeah. Well, Great we'll do our best. <laughs> Thank you. We'll do our best. Well, there we go. Well, let's take a look at the standings after one day of competition. The rankings are now based on numbers of series wins, and both G2 Esports and H2K were victorious. Yeah, Fnatic down, relegation zone at the moment, which is pretty tricky, but obviously doesn't really <laughs> matter after one game. And Honestly, they can be happy with the, with yesterday's performance, and I kind of feel like Origin as well can be okay with what happened. I think at the end of the day, no team played really poorly. I think we saw better performances than we expected out of Origin, a lot more patience than we expected out of H2K, but both Fnatic and G2 Esports played exceptionally well, uh, despite the results going in the favor of G2. Definitely, we'll see what Misfits can do today. And taking a look at yesterday, we also saw the new 10 ban system. Most picked and most banned, no surprises there. Uh, most picked Ash and Zyra were very very, very prominently featured, as well as Syndra, Rek'Sai, and Maokai for the top lane. And the most banned, not really any big surprises nope. there. Rengar, Camille banned as well. You don't want to put any of those very, very strong yeah. champions on the Rift. <laughs> even even less surprising, I would argue. You know, Sydney Zyra, show, Ash, like, nah. no. it's cool. Maokai coming back is kind of cool for those of you who didn't is watch that cool? the off, for the offseason. No, it's... it's Maokai's kind of boring. As a play by my caster, it's horrendously boring. If they use yeah. But it's good, it's effective. Meow Kai is okay, good. makes it okay. I, the, <laughs> bands, <laughs> the band's no real big surprise, as you said. Like, Camille is very, very strong, two roles. LeBlanc is super good. Renga, of course, is the best jungler. So it also means, like, on red side at the moment, you're kind of forced to just ban the OPs, which does suck for teams, which is why they're picking blue side, just to be like, we want freedom. Because we saw G2 yesterday like start banning out Reckless and so on from the blue side, yep. and it was actually very effective. Rengar, um, I mean, no Katarina yet either, and we we're excited to maybe see that one, but... It's going to happen later today. You feel it? It will yeah. happen. That's will a happen. champion that play-by-plays are always excited about. Daggers every... I just scream. It doesn't even matter. There's too much to say, so you just say words, and no matter what you say in the Katarina <laughs> team fight, it's always appropriate. Well, uh, outside of the picks and bans, what else was your biggest takeaway from yesterday? Um, I think uh, Fnatic obviously was a team we talked a lot about also after the show, how we were happy, honestly, seeing this uh, new roster with all the changes go toe-to-toe -to -toe with G2 Esports, who is, of course, the European champions. And I think overall, plays like the one we see on screen now, like this backdoor with Caps and the rest of the team using the Riot ulti, it's the kind of stuff we're going to see more of, I think, from Fnatic. Yeah, I liked it. It was a very smart strategic play. And additionally, uh, G2, despite having some struggles in that series, Expect felt like he's approved a decent amount, much better TPs, much better flanks. So I think good notes for both of these teams. And of course, G2, happy to have the win. And I believe the show it was you that was saying, well, you don't really want your two-time champion from last year to get slaughtered by a team immediately, True. even though. So this is maybe in terms of how it will evolve, the best possible way things could yeah. have gone. I think for Group A and EULCS, this was the best kind of series because G2 showed they were still the best team, which is what we expected. But Fnatic also showed the new roster has a lot of potential and they can actually become one of the top teams. And then that other series we saw to uh, start off today in Group B, H2K taking on Origin. Nobody expected a lot from Origin, a lot of question marks. Maybe they could have even gotten stomped in that series, but they kept their own very steadily up until 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, of course, looking at this series overall, Yangos did reference communication issues on the team, and there were a few instances, especially in this fight, where you saw where the team wasn't quite as decisive on when and where they wanted to go in, but you also saw some great picks, and at the end of the day, H2K still pulled out the win pretty cleanly, despite maybe not being quite as coordinated as So does H2K look like the strongest team in Group B? I mean, we haven't seen enough teams play. We get Vitality Unicorns today. That could be two of the guys fighting for that number one spot. I think H2K just had a very slow and steady game. They can obviously get much better. And more information will be coming to us today as we'll be bringing you two more best of threes. The Newcomers Misfits versus Giants and the Unicorns of Love Asset. We'll be taking on Vitality. Quick thoughts about that series that you guys will be casting later. I, I'm really excited. <laughs> it's my first cast this season. It's hard for me to say anything other than hype. I'm really excited to watch the, the top lane matchup specifically. There's a lot of tanks in the meta, which has always been Chachi's uh, kind of ground. But there's also some carries we haven't seen yet. And that's uh, kind of the territory of Cabo. So maybe we'll see a mix of styles there. Or maybe we'll a see A lot of new now. players as well, like Junglers in there, bot lane as well. See what Hachani can do. We both really like Hachani, but also he's against you know, a good bot lane from Unicorns of Love. Yeah, definitely. That's coming up a bit later. For now, we're going to take a look at our first match of the day. Joining us on the Rift, promoted from the Challenger 
Challenger Series. It is Misfits within the top lane, Alfari, Kakao in the jungle, Power of Evil in mid on AD Carry, Han Sama, Support Ignar and their coach Daku. Of course, they lost to Origin in the promotion tournament, but then ended up by beating Schalke, and they are here now in the LCS. They have made some changes, though. What do you guys make of the positions they did change? All right, there's a lot of new names here, and I know you guys are excited about the new... Kakao! Let's talk about... <laughs> I just want to talk about Kakao. This man was a god right when I first started watching competitive League of Legends. He was uh, a hero of the jungle around that dandy era, and I'm really excited to see him on this team. He did spend some time in China, wasn't quite as successful as his time in Korea, so I'm, I'm yeah. skeptical. Yeah, again, if you guys have never watched him before, like super aggressive, very known for his like, good pathing, invading, finding the enemy jungler, fighting him. And he was actually known as like the best in the world at being this super carry jungle style that he almost invented, or he was part of at least, uh, starting that. So that's really interesting to watch what he can do, but he's obviously not been very good lately, and that's why we have to see him kind of return to form. Yeah, we'll have to see if this squad can rise to the expectations, because we have squads like Splice, who came out as Challenger and did very well. G2, can Misfits be as strong as a force? I'm also looking at Alfari in the top lane. How many exceptional players or exceptional qualities do they have? I think they have some really good players, especially like Alfari you mentioned. I think Ignar and Kakao together. They build in synergy, the two Koreans, obviously they have very good communication with each other and I think they also understand how to play the game, they're very much on the same page. I think that can be really, really good. I'm not 100% sold on Power Weaver Hansama being like top, top, top tier carries just yet. I think that might keep Misfits from being like a number one or two team. I think the big positive sign is that this team is obviously taking it very seriously. They pulled in new sponsorship, they went to Korea to boot camp, they built this roster, they planned for this, and they've, they've made good first steps. Is it going to transfer to the stage? We really can't be sure, but they have definitely made the moves, uh, the appropriate moves to get a top roster. They have so much time. It's just it's a spring split. You know, they don't have to be the best already. No, but they could start by winning out, and they are up uh, versus Giants Gaming today, who also went through a bunch of changes in the top lane. We have Flashes in the jungle, Memento, Knight in the mid lane at AD Carry Hikyu support Hustlin and their coach Lothark. Uh, they did make playoffs last split round in the summer. Mm -hmm. However, they didn't do very good there, so they decided to change things up. What do you guys make of this new rebuilt roster around Knight, who was the big carry last split? Well, let's just start with Knight, because for me, that is the high point of this roster. Knight is still here. He is still there to be the backbone for this team. He was very consistent throughout uh, the regular split and during summer. Looks like a very strong player. Cassio is in the meta. It's a champion that's comfortable for him. Rise, also something we've seen him do pretty well on. I, I like this guy. I think he's going to do very well for the team, and I think Giants needs to put their resources into helping him succeed. I mean, I think it's very easy for Giants to be like, hey, get Knight fed. That's a very simple strategy. I just don't think it's going to be that effective, because every other team also have very good mid laners in Europe, and I feel like it's too obvious almost. So when you asked about replacing some of these guys they lost, and I'm not sold on the replacements. Flagship instead of Smitty J, new AD carry and HQ is instead of Sunstar. I feel like there are some problems here. Memento is a guy I like in the jungle, but he replaces Maxlaw, who I think was, is really one of the up-and-coming talents here in Europe and was very important for them. So it's really big shoes he has to fill. We'll see what they can do. Quick predictions before we uh, get to pick some bands. I'm going to say Misfits, and I'm going to say 2-0 to Misfits. I'm going to say Misfits, but in the end, I think it's going to be a 2-1. I have a lot of faith in Memento and Knight uh, figuring out a way to find a win here. All right, we'll see what happens. Misfits and Giants are standing by for Picks and Vans, so let's hand it over to the caster desk for Game 1.